Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Michael Zarek. He's a professor at the University of Georgia, and also Connie Mel. She is a graduate research assistant. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before the cameras went on, uh, Michael, you were telling me, even though we're going to talk about chickens today, you were ta talking to me about sacred cows. Can you elaborate on that a little bit and how they relate to the poultry industry? There's a lot of management practices we have in the poultry industry that we take as fact. Sacred cows that you can't change. It's just the way the birds are. And these things might be going on for decades of a certain management practice that you can violate. Um, the research we do a lot of times, we want to take a step back ever so often to say, is this practice necessarily something that is based in fact? Or is it based in old wives' tales about how the birds react? Because, you know, a lot of these things, we could be doing a better job if we actually evaluate the practice, is there scientific data, is it a good practice, and should we carry on with it or, you know, in the future? Or if it was a good idea 20 years ago, is it still a good idea today? Exactly, the birds change, and therefore our management needs to change a lot of times. Absolutely, so um, you looked at water, which is a really important aspect of poultry production, and um, you're looking at putting paper under the, under the drinkers, but I mean, that's not really a new concept. No, no it isn't. What we're looking for is they've been, people have been doing it for years, and they say, oh, it's a good idea. Let's put the paper under the drinkers to attract the, the birds when they're young to the water. Let's get them off to a really good start, get them on that water really quick, get them on feed really quick, so we can have a nice, healthy chick for the first week. But again, it's one of those practices, it sounds like a good idea, probably doesn't hurt anything, but does it really affect bird performance? Does it really attract the birds to the water? Do they actually drink a lot more water? Do they actually gain more weight? Those are the things we're not quite sure. So, Connie, tell me about the study. How was it set up? Um, so essentially, we held this out in farms, so we wanted to do field charge because we wanted to test it on the farm. So we tested a total of six farms for this particular study. On each farm, we had two houses, each house being a treatment. So one whole house had no paper under the drinker lines, while the other house had paper placed under every drinker line. Um, and the study took place from zero to seven days because people were claiming it improves first week performance. So from day zero, we were recording water usage, essentially moments after the chicks were being placed because we have these um, new meters we're testing that can essentially pick up about uh, 20 to 5,000 milliliters per minute. Um, so with that, we were able to really see whether or not that paper actually initiates drinking activity at the beginning. Um, with that, we also collected body weights on day 017 just to test out does it actually increase body weights. And then we also supplemented that with um, collecting first week mortality because people were also claiming that it reduced first week mortality. So, so what did you find? Uh, pretty much that um, there is an effect, but it's extremely short term. The increased water usage happened for about three to four hours, but then between the two houses, essentially they came back right together and relatively the same water usage. So um, it does do something, but it's not to what people believe to be to that extent. So Were you surprised by the results? I, I was to some extent because it is quite shocking when you go in the house after the chicks are placed, you just can't help but say, look at all the chicks and they really do move to those drinker lines. You say it has to have an effect and you're saying, well, they're drinking more water, they're obviously eating more feet, we're getting them off to a better start. But when you take that step back and you look at and you go in there three hours or four hours later and you don't see a difference, then you start to question does it really have an impact? So again, we were surprised, but after looking at the data, it sort of goes, it sort of makes sense that it didn't have a big effect uh, on the performance of the brain. And all of the chicks in the study were exposed to the same lighting? Yeah. Yes. Yep. So that wasn't a factor. So what would be the takeaway messages then for uh, poultry producers? I would, there's a, a couple of messages. Number one, there's a lot that goes into chick performance. You know, getting them off to water is just one step. Having the proper brooding temperatures. You know, breeder flock age had a big effect on it. So there's a lot of factors. There's not one magic bullet. It's a multifactorial thing, and this is just one practice. Not that it's necessarily bad, but it's not going to make or break an operation. It could, you know, it doesn't hurt. 
but maybe that grower's time and money and effort is better spent on doing something in the house. You know, we, we didn't look at paper under the feed lines and things like that. Maybe that would be a better use of the grower's time and money. Uh, we, we know that the paper has a visual effect on, on the chicks, but because it's placed under the, the water, uh, might it also help to keep the, the litter drier, just in case you've got like a, a leak in one of the lines? That's actually an interesting take. Um, I believe more so that would just be with drinker management as well as just minimum ventilation settings. Um, some of the farms they found that if they did have to have, if they were to have litter issues, it wasn't due to the paper, it was just due to those other factors that I just mentioned. Um, and one of the things, comments I heard from a grower we were talking to this about, and they brought up an interesting point. They say they put the paper under the drinkers, and one of the things they can tell if their nipples are leaking. So it's a good visual thing saying, oh, look at them. I've got a lot of drops on the paper. And they go, oh, I need to replace those nipples. So it's one of those little things that's difficult to see without the paper. But you know, other than that, it's, it's hard to see a huge benefit. So in summary, uh, if, if you have the time and resources, if you want to keep doing it, it's not going to do any harm, but exactly. there may not be any big tangible benefit either. Not, not what we've seen so far. We're going to continue to do more houses with different types of papers to see if we can um, see an effect, but right now, not much. Well, sometimes the most important research is figuring out what you don't need, and that's exactly. in essence what you did here. Exactly. Excellent. We've been talking to Michael Zarek. He's a professor at the University of Georgia and also Connie Mao, a graduate research assistant. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Our you. Pleasure.